they have records which go back to the uh, 17th century and that uh, they also feel there were some conferences where uh, which the uh, which looked at their claim uh, in a more positive manner this is their claim now what actually happened uh, on kachatibu was after both india and sri lanka became independent the there were issues between the military of the two countries about using this island and that's how this issue actually uh, came up uh, as an issue between the governments and uh, from the 1960s uh, this issue picked up and uh, the, it was uh, particularly uh, discussed uh, the, there were many discussions but i think the most important one was a discussion in 1974 few months before the kachatibu agreement was done when the then sri lankan uh, prime minister sirimavo bandanaike came and met indira gandhi ji who was then prime minister of india so this broadly uh, was the uh, is the issue these are the claims but as i said we know who did it we are today looking and discussing who hid it now in all of this whenever there is a territorial dispute it is natural that uh, there is a uh, there is a uh, uh, request you know you take a legal legal view of uh, uh, what is uh, the uh, what what is the uh, claim so at this time the legal view uh, was actually uh, originally sought from the then attorney general of india shri mc setalwat many of you would be familiar he was a very famous person he was a legal luminary now it's very interesting uh, shri setalwat gave his legal opinion as the attorney general in 1958 in that Uh, in that opinion he says the matter and i'm reading from it the matter is by no means clear or free from difficulty but on the assessment of the whole evidence it appears to me that the balance lies in favor of concluding that the sovereignty of the island was and is in india so this is the opinion of the then attorney general in fact he not only mentions that he also says because please note he says that the matter is by no means clear he says whatever is agreed it can also be limited by custom or treaty and therefore mr setalwat suggests that it may be possible for india to contend that there exists a right by custom in the indian fishermen to fish in the territorial waters of the island so essentially the attorney general is saying that the balance of the uh, the balance is uh, something which uh, goes in favor of uh, india but even if it doesn't there is still a case there is still a case to insist on fishing rights access of indian fishermen to this uh, to the waters of this island now interestingly other than uh, the attorney general you know the ministry of external affairs also has a legal department so we had a gentleman there at that time called dr k krishna rao he was a very eminent uh, person dealing with international law and mr k krishna rao also takes a very interesting view he says i am not suggesting that we have no case at all but i submit that our legal case in this connection may be used to obtain fishing rights around the island so what we have essentially is you have the uh, main legal people and please bear in mind we are talking 1958 and 1960 the main people actually saying look we have a case 